One of the most beloved features in the Pokemon franchise is, without a doubt, following Pokemon. It's no surprise either, seeing NPCs getting to hang out with their Pokemon in the overworld, and the numerous amount of Pokemon that refuse to stay in their Pokeballs in the anime, it's a very desirable feature to many fans. Getting to have your Pokemon actually explore the world right alongside you helps make the journey feel that much more involved and personal. The first time we ever had a following Pokemon in the games is all the way back in Pokemon Yellow. Yellow, being a game heavily inspired by the events of the anime, has players getting a Pikachu for their starter that will, as long as it's in the party, follow the trainer around, being able to be interacted with at any time. Pikachu even gets some pop-ups now and then to help showcase its current mood and emotions, and when sending it into battle, if it goes to Pokeball animations as, well, it's already outside of one. While it was locked only your starter Pikachu in yellow, it paved the path for the future following Pokemon in the franchise. We would not see following Pokemon again until the fourth generation, where in the Sinnoh games there is an area called Amity Square, which allows you to walk with a very specific set of Pokemon. These Pokemon are Pikachu, Clefairy, Psyduck, Hapini, Baneary, Pachirisu, and Drifloon, with Jigglypuff, Torchic, Shroomish, and Skitty being permitted once the National Dex is required. These are all that's available in Diamond and Pearl. Platinum at least added all stages of the Sinnoh starters to the list. Well, it's not a whole lot, it's still a lot more than just the Pikachu in yellow. Interesting to note, if your Pokemon is shiny, it will not show as such while walking with it. You can interact with them the same as in yellow, and you get special items while walking around the park, and really, that's about it for the Sinnoh games. However, the very next games, Heart Gold and Soul Silver, took the following Pokemon up to 11. For the entire game, the Pokemon in the first slot of your party will follow you. All Pokemon, in all forms, can walk with you, and they will even show a shiny this time. Just like in Yellow, when sending your following Pokemon into battle, it just joins in, no need to be released from a ball. When talking about the positives of these games, the following Pokemon is always listed so high. It really adds a level of charm to the games, for now that childhood desire of walking with your favorite Pokemon wherever you are can truly be fulfilled. Heart Gold and Soul Silver are the reason following Pokemon became one of the most requested features for every single new release in this franchise. After Heart Gold and Soul Silver, following Pokemon went mostly absent from the series. In Black and White 2, there's an NPC that lets you walk around their house with their main foo, and that's about it. The Alola games had walking and running animations for every single Pokemon, but that went mostly unused. However, entering the age of the Switch games, everything changed. Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee have probably what is the pinnacle of following Pokemon, as due to the extremely small roster of only 153 Pokemon, each and every Pokemon has so much character to the way they follow you. No longer bound to being sprites on a grid, these Pokemon now have to walk around like they should. Some are fast, some are slow, some like Bellsprout run ahead of you as they are moving. As a note, if you get too separated from your Pokemon, they just return to their ball and then will exit again right near you. Some of the bigger Pokemon even let you ride them, like Snorlax and Arcanine. Charizard, Dragonite, and Aerodactyl let you fly on their backs, while during the story they stay low to the ground, once you beat the Elite Four, you are able to soar to the skies with them and have a whole new layer of Pokemon encounters. You can also still interact with your Pokemon all the same, but now you can see more of their character outside of just those interactions. These games take the experience to a whole new level, where your Pokemon isn't just following you, but they are actively exploring alongside you, in their own unique ways. It also changes the way you approach the game, especially in team building. This game doesn't have a bike, so maybe you add a Persian or an Arcanine to your team for some extra speed. Maybe you want some extra pizzazz while surfing, so you add a Lapras or Gyarados so you can ride them instead. Also, unlike in HeartGold and SoulSilver, these games let you choose which party member is following you, no longer dictated by position in your party. This means that if you really so desire, you can also just have no Pokemon following you. Let's Go really perfected the art of following Pokemon, but unfortunately it, to this day, still remains on top. The next Pokemon games on the Switch were Sword and Shield, and they didn't have following Pokemon. Their DLC, however, did. After progressing through a bit of the Isle of Armor, you'll be told that you are allowed to walk around with your Pokemon freely inside the Isle of Armor. That's right, it got added back, but only in the DLC area. The same goes for the Crown Tundra. The following Pokemon take a few steps back here and I believe it's because the feature was added due to response of the feature's removal yet again from the franchise. The following Pokemon is just your first team member again, and you have to talk to an NPC to toggle the feature on and off for each DLC area separately. Now, in the base game, all the Pokemon had walking and running animations for camp, and some of them were really slow, which transferred over to the following feature. This means that, for a good chunk of Pokemon, they're constantly returning and leaving their ball if you plan to make it anywhere in good time. 
they also, for the first time, will still follow you if you're riding your bike, which for a majority of Pokemon means they are just going to be spamming the enter and exit ball sound. The following Pokemon in this game is flat out not great. However, being able to still chill with your Pokemon is still so awesome that it's easy to overlook its negatives, especially if you view it as a little bonus, one that, if I recall correctly, wasn't even advertised. Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, a game I'm known to rag on from time to time, have the absolute worst, most garbage ass following Pokemon in the series. BDSP, as you may notice, have this chibi art style. It has this for everything, except the Pokemon. In the overworld, the Pokemon are the same as their battle models, just shrunk down so they don't fit in. Some Pokemon also don't have proper walking animations, like Ekans. What the fuck is up with this? Also, so many Pokemon are just slower than your character, so if you want to actually walk with them, it's just a constant start and stop. They know that this feature is beloved, and they used it to advertise the game, to drum up sales. The trailers even feature a following Pokemon in the deep snow, walking on top, looking jank as hell, and they solve that issue by just not allowing your Pokemon to follow you on that route. The way to unlock following Pokemon in this game is also pretty ass, as you have to visit Amity Square, which retains the list of eligible Pokemon from Platinum, as well as adding the Eevee line. This means you have to wait until after Badge 2 to unlock the ability to walk with your Pokemon. They added the feature to have all eligible Pokemon in your party to be able to roam with you inside of Amity Square, which is cool, but would be a lot nicer if the list was larger than 28 Pokemon. Especially since there's a Poffin machine that if used with Pokemon with max affection is the best machine in the game for Poffin making. Mechanically, the game lets you choose which Pokemon you walk with, like in Let's Go, so it's super easy to ignore this feature, but god it's just so disappointing. Torterra, my favorite Sinnoh starter, is just too slow for me to realistically walk with. I kept a Bidoof my whole playthrough just so I had something somewhat decently scaled, but it was ultimately not fast enough. Pokemon that fly have a better consistency for not being so slow, but even then it's still easy to lose some of them. The following Pokemon in BDSP are just hot doggy doo doo, and it, like a lot about these remakes, just really piss me off. Next up we have Legends Arceus. This game doesn't have following Pokemon, but you can send them out pretty much wherever and they will just stand there, allowing for you to interact with them. You can send out your whole team if you want to, and if you send one out at another, they will stand there and like talk to each other, which is pretty cool. Also with being able to remove the HUD as well as the zoom function, it allows for you to get some pretty sick shots of your Pokemon, especially because they look so damn good in this game. While they don't follow you, I still like this route, avoids the weirdness of some like in Sword and Shield and the disappointment from BDSP. You can just pop God out and talk to him whenever you see fit. We now reach our current final stop, Scarlet and Violet. These games have probably the biggest changes to following Pokemon, because while they can follow you around, like has become a mainstay on the Switch, there's also Let's Go mode, which lets you send your following Pokemon into like attack mode and they will just go fight any Pokemon they see, unless it's a shiny. It's a neat way to get passive XP, but there's still a lot of slow Pokemon which makes this feature really not my cup of tea. There's also a new way of sending out your following Pokemon, for it's no longer an option in the menu. You can just toss out and recall your Pokemon at the top of your party whenever you desire. Super easy. At this point in the series, I no longer get the awe of being able to walk with my Pokemon. In Yellow and Heart Gold Soul Silver, being grid based and sprites, every Pokemon can easily follow one tile behind you. In Let's Go, the extremely small pool of Pokemon let them fine tune everything about it. But now it's just like, yeah, your Pokemon walking around, doing their thing, kind of just there now to the point where I barely even bother using the feature because it's become more of a hassle than it's worth. Most times I use it is when I'm taking pictures of my Pokemon, but even then they remove the ability to hide the camera HUD so you can no longer get footage without either your player or the HUD. There is, however, something new the Indigo Disc DLC introduced, the Synchro Machine. This device allows you to sync with your currently following Pokemon, and you can control their movements. While it only works in the Blueberry Academy, they casually just drop the feature to play as your Pokemon. It's really fun to just mess around with it, I can play as Pokemon I've had since I was a child. I really hope we don't have to wait a few generations for this feature to become a mainstay, because while it's nowhere near as great as it could be, it's still a strong start for something that can fill in for following Pokemon, being that new feature that raises awe and interest. And well, this has been the rise and fall of following Pokemon. What started as a gimmick for an extra version of Generation 1 eventually became one of the most beloved features of the franchise, to one that's been kinda mishandled leading to it losing some of that awe factor. It becoming a mainstay feature in the Switch era was something I thought I could only dream of, but it becoming reality has made me kind of lose interest in it. Sure, if it was better in the past few games it wouldn't be as bad, but it's just not new or novel anymore. Becoming an expected feature has made me indifferent to its reveal with each new game. I'll just have to sit and hope that one day we get following Pokemon like Let's Go again, but for now, I'll just hope that we don't lose the Synchro Machine as it could really be the successor to following Pokemon's hype. With all that rambling now over, I would love to hear your thoughts on following Pokemon down in the comments below. Leaving a like and dropping a sub would also be appreciated as always, as it truly does help out the channel. 
This has been Big Blast 99, and I hope you all have yourselves a goddamn good one.